Good morning, and welcome to Sunday worship at St. Christopher's. I'm really glad you're here to join in this holy fourth Sunday of Easter together in prayer. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him together in the words of the Pascha Nostrum. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Please join with me in reading together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added their number, those who are being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us together say the canticle, the Dignus S. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship, praise, dominion, and splendor forever and forevermore. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, 
Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 23, so familiar to the ear, such beautiful words that surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Those words are so familiar, and yet we can say them over and over, and they never tire. And I think the reason for that is that there really is truly the voice of God coming through to us. And that's what really this whole Shepherd Sunday is all about. It's such an important part of the Easter resurrection story that we have this great shepherd that is ultimately faithful, that is ultimately good, that is always inviting us to life, as we hear in those last words of the gospel today. It's interesting that leading up to this particular story, this is, takes place in uh, chapter 10 of the Gospel of John. You may recall that in the Gospel, uh, the chapter 9 of that same Gospel, is the story of the man that was cured of blindness, that he was blind from birth. It's a very, very long Gospel reading. It takes up the whole chapter. And just to refresh your memory about it, this is a person that Jesus comes upon that was begging and had been blind from birth. And he cures him on the Sabbath day. The interesting thing about it, a couple of things. First of all, he didn't have the opportunity to see Jesus because all he could do was hear. Even as he was, as Jesus put mud on his eyes and sent him forward, he still couldn't see Jesus. He had to go only by what he heard. And then he was very unfortunately grilled by the Pharisees and the scribes and the leaders because they found it incredulous that Jesus would cure on the Sabbath day. And so rather than accepting that, rather than participating it and seeing that drawing out of beautiful life, they decided that they had to condemn Jesus because he had done this. He was not observing the Sabbath. And yet he was helping a blind man that would be able to observe the Sabbath in fullness all the rest of his days. The sad thing about that is that the Pharisees and the other leadership, they were supposed to be the shepherds. They were supposed to be that lineage of Moses who took the Israelites through 40 years in the wilderness to the promised land. They're supposed to be the lineage of all of the judges and prophets of all the ages to take good care of the people, not to exploit them, not to objectify them. They were perfectly happy to have this man lay in the corner of this uh, uh, temple blind for the rest of his days because they were convinced that the reason he was blind is because he sinned. That's, of course, how that whole chapter starts. Disciples asking Jesus, who sinned? Was it this man, the blind man, or was it his parents? Ironically, his parents were also part of the grilling. And so it's really just the ultimate opposite of what the Pharisees did do is what they should have done as being shepherds. And Jesus stands as that great example of what happens when we do have a faithful shepherd. 
he uses this whole image of the sheep, and we know that sheep, well, they may not be the most intelligent creatures in the world. Don't know exactly how smart they are, but we do know that they have a propensity for getting lost, not being able to find food and water, and not being able to even return back home. That sometimes sounds a little bit like us, doesn't it? That sometimes we find ourselves getting lost. We find ourselves not really able to find the right food and drink, so to speak, the right nourishment that can really fortify us and in a way that exalts God, in a way that propels us to worship, offer up praise and thanksgiving. So Jesus tells us for that reason, he is the gate and the shepherd. And that we, go, we call to his voice, that we listen to his voice, just like in that beautiful psalm, that we can hear the voice of God in that. Even as we're having this service today, you may hear every once in a while a couple of kids' voices. They're out there playing in the parking lot. It's a gorgeous day. The sun's shining. The beautiful magnolia tree right outside of our window is beginning to blossom in, it, it blossom in its fullness. All of this even while we're still grappling with a global pandemic, that there's been tremendous loss. And sometimes, even though we don't hear Jesus' voice in the kind of vernacular that we talk with one another, I really truly believe that we can hear Jesus' voice beckoning our souls into safety through the gate, even as things around us seem to be crumbling. That we can hear Jesus' voice in the breeze through the trees. We can hear it in the laughter of the children that really are just not tuned into the depth of the problem that we're in, perhaps. Whatever way it is that we hear the voice of Jesus, whether it be through the beautiful hymn that Christian played before this service, so familiar to the ear, so full of love and kindness, or Psalm 23, or even other Psalms, that that's the voice that's the nourishment of our soul. Even as we are tempted in all things in this world that would be the bandits and thieves of mercy and grace, that Jesus continues on beckoning us with that beautiful, loving, kind voice. Let us all adhere to his call. Even as we struggle, as we go through this experience together, if we adhere to that call to come to the beautiful shepherd, we will make our way through this. Our soul will be nourished and we'll be a greater people. Let us continue by professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. 
Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose Son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people. Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through, your, uh, through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask you to lift up your prayers today for all people who suffer from this present condition of the COVID-19 crisis. Whether they are su suffering in body, mind, or spirit, that they hear the voice of Jesus beckoning them to goodness and love and kindness and mercy. We pray for all of those. Pray for the folks specifically that are on the front lines of this, the care, caregivers, the medical professionals, the scientists, everyone who works day and night to eradicate the disease. We pray for Kathy and Dick, Michael, Susan, Elizabeth, Nance, Julie and Matt, Jenny, Will, and their, all their families. Deanna, Helen, Leon, Tommy, Stephanie and Ryan, James and Mary, Tony, Fred, Ella, Jenna, Heidi, Joyce, Michelle, Connor, Elliot, Linda, Holly, Andrew, Jackson, Risa, and Betty, Grace, Kaya, Kalise, their father Kwame, Grandmother Kathy, Nels, Claire, Brian, Anne, Shirley, Patrick, Jim, Rob, Nikki, Laura, Bill and Sue, Floyd, Bonnie, David, Betsy, Kate and Jerry, Becky, Diane, Caroline, Donna, and Nancy. Pray, Lord, that all of your people may continually hear, heed to your call and reject the call of those that would be thieves and bandits of your mercy and your abundant grace and love that we cherish deeply in our hearts. Let us be purified by our present condition rather than being dragged down. Let us find ourselves coming closer to you rather than turning away. And instill in us deep in our hearts that peace that goes beyond all human understanding that would keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge of you, O Lord, and your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
close with the words of the general thanksgiving together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.